take control of your dependencies, wrestle them together and publish them out with ease using nothing more than hosted NuGet packages. Learn how on on.net. Hello and welcome to another episode of On.net. I'm here with Abel Wang. Abel, how's it going? Hey, Jeremy. Great to see you again, man. Good to see you. We're going to talk about hosting NuGet packages. Yeah, it's super, super important, right? Because um, a lot of times when I talk to our customers, they ask me questions like, oh, we have a team, we have this shared library. How are we supposed to manage like the DLLs, right? Because I, if I change the source code, it's going to affect them. And the answer to that ultimately is by using NuGet packages. And the idea is you have a central location where you store your packages. And what's cool is now you get to version, it basically versions up your DLLs, right? It versions up your libraries. So then when I create my solution or when I create my project, I can say, you know what? Use this library, this specific library, and also this specific version. And it'll go ahead and download it, and then it'll, you know, I'll compile and, and, and use that library. So this is super cool. And then if, if another team that owns that library creates a new version of that library, but they introduce breaking changes to the API, well, the version number increases. My code won't break because I'm still pointing to the right version. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and upgrade, go up to the next version, and make my code changes, right? So this gives us a nice controlled way of dealing with libraries. So it sounds like I'm used to NuGet, obviously, built into Visual Studio. There's a, a standard place where you would get your NuGet packages. When we release products, we release them there. And it's, it's nice because there's a set of dependency rules and version rules, et cetera. But what you're talking about is in addition to that sort of, I guess we would call it official repo, there's also a way that you can host your own packages internally. You don't have to put them out there in the public to take advantage of NuGet. Yeah, so NuGet's freaking awesome, right? With with the public NuGet feeds and stuff. But there are times when you want your feeds to be private. Like these could be internal libraries in an enterprise. Well, you just don't want to throw them into like a, the public NuGet feed, right? So the way that you can handle this is you can actually spin up your own private instance of a NuGet feed. And you can do this inside of Azure DevOps, for instance, or even inside of GitHub as well. So, awesome. So I don't even know how to get started with that. How do we spin up our own NuGet host? All right, let me go ahead and show you. Let me share my screen with you really quickly. So what you're looking at is, of course, Visual Studio, right? And we're all .NET developers, so we understand this really well. Um, to make sure that you create a NuGet package, this is easy enough. If we right-click on the project, let's go to Properties. If we click on Packaging, well, guess what? If I click on Generate NuGet Package on Build, Every time I build this solution, it's going to go ahead and create that NuGet package for me. So I can fill this form out, right? Give it an ID, give it a version number, so on and so forth. So literally, that's all I need to do. And now when I build my solution, it will go ahead and create that NuGet package for me. Um, of course, I can also right click and instead of build, I can say pack, and that will go ahead and create for me that NuGet package as well. So a couple of different ways we can do that. And of course, there's going to be people that love the command line as well. So from the command line, you mm -hmm. can .NET pack, and hooray for that, you can create your new baguette packages as well. But as you know, I'm kind of a DevOps guy, right? So I want it to be all this done in an automated pipeline. So let me show you how you can do that. Awesome. All right, so let me bring up Azure DevOps Services. And you notice one of the things that it has let me go ahead and scroll all the way down, is the artifact repository. So this artifact repository, you can basically create whatever feeds you need, and now you're creating private NuGet feeds that only people that can log into Azure DevOps will be able to see. So I created a feed called my test feed, and as you can see, it's just completely empty, right? So okay. connect to this feed, let's go ahead and click on it. Let's say we want to connect with uh, NuGet.exe, it will give you exactly how you need to configure everything, right? Uh, if you want to use the .NET uh, CLI, well, it shows you how to do that as well. If you use Visual Studio, so on and so forth. Now, inside of Azure DevOps Services, the Artifact Repository, it doesn't just do NuGet. It also does NPM, Maven, Gradle, PIP, 
twine and also universal packages, which is my favorite because it's basically just you can package up any directory and be like, okay, that's going to be my package. So okay. super, super powerful. Now to use this is super simple. So let's go ahead and jump to our pipeline. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's kick off a build. So here's my build. Let's go ahead and run this pipeline. And what is this pipeline doing, right? So while this is building, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if we look at this pipeline, and I'm doing everything using the visual editor. Usually I use YAML. YAML is awesome, but it doesn't demo very well, right? A big wall of YAML, is, is it doesn't demo well. So I, I use the visual editor this time, but I'm a huge fan of YAML. Uh, this is my build. It's doing nothing special, right? Restore from NuGet, build my solution from Visual Studio. And if you look at this, you can see that I'm not doing anything special with my build. I'm just saying build. build. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I run unit test. Haha, -ha, I didn't write any unit test for my little library. And then I publish my symbols back up. Right? All right. So that's all it does. It's just build my application. So if we look at that build, and of course it's still building. So let's look at one that's already done. You can see here is my artifact. Well, this is the, the build artifacts. And what do I have? I have my DLLs and, so here's the DLLs that it creates, and it created for me my NuGet package. Because remember, you just build the solution, one of your build artifacts is going to be this NuGet package. So if this build is successful. It kicks off my release pipeline. So here's my release pipeline. And I made this really simple. It's just basically one job. And what does it do? All it does is it, I use the NuGet push task. Uh, if you need to find it, let's go ahead and search for NuGet. And oh yeah, here's my NuGet task. So that's all I'm using. Uh, and I'm doing a NuGet push. Let's take a look at the properties here. I have a path to my NuGet package, and I'm using one of the feeds for this particular solution. Um, and I pick my test feed, and yeah, dude, that's it. That's all I do. So now let's go ahead and jump into our pipeline and see what's going on. It looks like we've built successfully. Okay. If we go to our releases, we can see that now it's kicking off the release. So let's jump into the release live and see exactly what it's doing. So now, of course, it's waiting in a queue. It's kicked it off. And remember, it's really, this release really isn't doing a whole lot, right? All it's going to do is it's just going to go ahead and push my packages up to NuGet. So while it's doing this, uh, any questions? Does that make sense? That makes sense. So if I understand correctly, we basically had uh, three steps, right? You had the step to enable the pack on build. So that mm -hmm. becomes a build artifact. Yep. You had the step to go into your artifacts and say, hey, I want to have a NuGet feed that's exposed internally yep. through Azure DevOps. And then the last step was you added a task to push that artifact into the feed. Yep, that's it. It, it is literally that simple. So here's something interesting. We had a big fat error, right? Why is it? Because uh, I, cho I chose the wrong feed. But... <laughs> <laughs> but you build it, you push it, and you push it directly into, into the feed, and right for that, it's done. And remember, the feed is just a NuGet feed, which means all of your other projects can connect up to it the exact same way. Simple, simple to do. So question? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. Uh, this is great for Azure DevOps, but what if I'm maybe not using Azure DevOps? What if I'm just using GitHub, GitHub Actions, or maybe some other infrastructure, is it possible to host NuGet anywhere else? Absolutely. So you can host NuGet in a variety of places, right? NuGet packages. One of the places where you can create private feeds is also GitHub. So check this out. In your GitHub account, right? So I'm Able Squidhead. If you look, you have a section called Packages. That right there is a package repository. Right, right. So, um, there's, it can hold NuGet packages, it can hold Maven packages, so on and so forth. So this is really cool as well. And to use it, it's dirt simple. Let's go ahead and check out how to <laughs> use this. So here is this exact same project, right? This project really isn't a whole lot. I just have one add method. Uh, yeah, I know, that's pretty lame. But let's go ahead and do one thing, right? So this is my CS proj file. So there's a couple things that you have to have, right? 
first of all, you have to say that this is a library. Um, let's say the version is one dot, oh, let's go ahead and edit this. Let's change the version number to 1.0.3. Uh, I'm the author, of course. You can give it a description. But this part here is something that you have to have. So you need to give it your repository URL and the type of repository it is. So this is just my repository, right? Uh, Able Squidhead slash package hosting demo. And this is a Git repo. So you need this in your CS proj. So let's go ahead and check that in. And I have a GitHub action that builds my, my application as well and publishes the package to NuGet. So let me show you how that's done. Uh, we'll jump into the actions and you can see it's kicked it off. And if we drill in here, we'll be able to see it running live, right? So what is this really doing? Let's go look at how I configured my action. Sure. So if we jump into the actions. More YAML. More YAML. Uh, there is no vi visual editor, right? So it's going to be a wall of YAML. But luckily, the schema for GitHub Actions is pretty clean, and it's pretty easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So this section here, I basically check out my code. I set up my .NET, and I build my application and run my unit tests, right? So that's going to create the DLLs that I need. The next thing that I do is I set up my .NET Core so that it's pointing to my correct NuGet package. So since I'm pointing the NuGet, I'm sorry, the NuGet repository. So the repository that I'm pushing to is going to be in GitHub, so which is why it says nuget.pkg.github.com slash ablesquidhead.index.json, right? So that's going to be your source URL. And of course, it's secured, so I do need to pass in my token, my GitHub token. Yep. Uh, the next thing that I do is I run the .NET pack command, which is going to create for me that NuGet package. Um, all of this is debug nonsense that usually I would take out, but it, you know, I have to debug. It's the the uh, GitHub action equivalent of console write line all over the place. One hundred percent. That's exactly good. <laughs> right. And then, so in theory, after I run this call, right after I run the pack, that's going to go ahead and create for me my NuGet package, and then. If I do a .NET NuGet push and I point it to the NuGet package, well, that's going to push my new NuGet package into the repo, right? So let's see if this actually works. And it knows where to push it because you have it defined in the CS proj file. So. Exactly. So everything okay. comes in. Hooray for that. That's all is good. So if we look here, we can see that it ran everything, right? Including it generated the package and it pushed it up to our registry. All right, so if we go back to our package registry and let's refresh this from a two, now it's 1.0.3. So granted, this was a dirt simple demo, but that's kind of my point. I wanted to show people how easy it is to create a NuGet package, uh, but more importantly, how easy it is to actually host your own private NuGet package and then rub some DevOps on it and make it all DevOpsy and just automate the whole thing in your pipeline. And you can use a tool like a sim version or whatever to automatically iterate the versioning so you don't have to manually go in and, and uh, tune the dial, although sometimes people want to do that, right, and, and manually create releases. And I guess the, the other thing that is important for people to understand if they're not familiar with NuGet is the, the whole versioning principles. I love the way that you have a convention for specifying the version. So you can say, I need this exact version or anything above this version is fine or this major version. So a lot of flexibility to manage your project dependencies. Yeah, this is, this is super powerful. And again, like, you know, the best case scenario for this is if you're working on, you know, multiple teams are sharing a library and they all have access to that source code, right? Um, you can't just have people come in there and willy-nilly start changing the library because it's shared. But if you store them and version them as NuGet packages, everyone that consumes it can specify exactly which version they're consuming and then upgrade on their own time. Sounds great. Well, there you have it. If you want to manage complex dependencies or even simple dependencies, we had an application that just adds two numbers. This is how you set up, host your feed, and consume your feed too. So thanks for that, Abel. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs>